In Denver, a prison escapee, Philip Hutchinson, robs a credit union and speeds off. A police pursuit comes to a stunned halt when Hutchinson rams a detective and kills him. Now only a TV news helicopter is left to track him. The crew is in close communication with police as Hutchinson makes his next desperate move. He tries to hijack a truck in this trailer park. He walks up to this elderly gentleman and, and his granddaughter, and he points the gun at him, and he tells the old man to get in the truck and drive away from the area. The granddaughter manages to get away, but 73-year-old John Lorienti is forced into his truck. He just told me that I was a dead man if I didn't hurry and start that car. He said, that helicopter is after me, and you better get me out of here quick. I kept playing with the key. God, start. I was talking like that. As Lorienti slowly drives away, the gunman is hiding below the dashboard of the truck, pointing his gun up at the driver. As patrol cars searching the area approach on the narrow street leading out of the trailer park, all they see is a man driving along at about 10 miles an hour. And it appears that the suspect is going gonna, is gonna to get away because the police don't know he's in that green pickup truck. The only person who spots Hutchinson is pilot Mike Silva hovering overhead. I bring the power in the helicopter to start climbing up and the police cars drive past him. And Jim and I start screaming, what? Silva repeatedly yells into his radio, trying to let police know the suspect's location. But because the message has to be relayed by someone back at the TV station, it's taking a minute or two for word to get to the police cars. With one hand, I'm waving out the window, trying to get the police officers turned around. I can hear them now on the police radio. Go ahead with the emergency. Green pickup, pick a hostage. A green pickup, he's got him in a green pickup. A green pickup, a hostage. Silva now makes a crucial decision to make a daring maneuver. Well, all these police officers are in this real narrow street with the speed bumps, and they're trying to get turned around. I look over to my left. Here's this very busy lunchtime uh, traffic on Sheridan Boulevard, and they're, they're coming closer to that. I, I made a decision that what we'll do is go underneath the wires, come up in front of them at a hover, try to keep them slowed down, keep them contained. Silva carefully maneuvers his helicopter, avoiding these high tension lines. He drops to a three-foot hover and then swings around in front of the hijacked truck. As I do that, I can see the suspect now getting up from the floor and trying to situate himself to sit on the passenger seat. And I see the driver, the hostage, looking, staring at me. We're looking eye to eye, staring at each other. And he told me, ram it, ram it. And that blade was going around and everything. And I said, oh my God, we're going to get cut in pieces or something's going to happen to us. At that point, he levels the gun, uh, the gun's actually touching the glass, and I figure he's going to shoot me. I see this white streak, and it's a police car, and he impales him. He hits the pickup truck broadside. Officer Roger Prince rams his car into the front right wheel of the pickup, immobilizing it as other officers surround the truck. Jim Stair struggles to get his camera out of the helicopter. And all at the same time, you hear police officers with the expletives, freeze, uh, police, drop the gun, don't move, all these kind of things. And for just a, a moment there, I thought this was over. And then much to our shock, he reaches over and grabs the hostage around the neck and yanks him over to him and shoves the pistol into his cheek and we were kind of stunned. A dozen officers scream at Hutchinson to drop his gun. Less than a minute goes by, and Jim Stair points his camera just in time to capture the deadly conclusion of the standoff. The suspect would turn and try to look around. He would do this lumber like this and see what happens with his body. The gun, the pistol came away from, from hostage's head twice. And the third time, and that police officer shot him. 
13 shots are fired in just 14 seconds, and Philip Hutchinson's life of crime comes to a sudden and violent end. Though it has been just 22 minutes since the first call to police, it is a day no one involved will forget. A hostage has been saved, an officer has given his life, a violent suspect has been brought down. An investigation headed by Captain Fred Stoll determines that the use of deadly force was justified and necessary. And the police officers involved in that shooting gave that suspect every opportunity to uh, surrender, to give up, not move, freeze, whatever. This was an individual that wasn't going to be taken alive. Since pilot Mike Silva's maneuvers to block the hijacked truck could have threatened the safety of both the helicopter crew and people on the ground, the FAA also investigates the incident. But given the circumstances, the FAA clears all of Silva's extraordinary aerial maneuvers. And if it wasn't for Mike uh, Silva, uh, he might have gotten away on this day. And, and it's, it's certainly conceivable that uh, somebody else could have been killed as a result. In my book, Mike Silva's a hero. I have no regrets whatsoever about any of this. But afterwards, you know, when you start realizing what happened, it's tough. It's still tough today.